What's up, Shelf Addicts? Welcome back to the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Today on Book Chat, we are returning to the world of the Night Huntress series featuring fan favorite couple, Cat and Bones. Stay tuned. Today's episode is sponsored by the book, A New Renaissance, a celebration of African-American fiction by Rhonda M. Lawson and the Mocha Girls Read Book Club. Twelve authors have joined forces to honor the trailblazers of the Harlem Renaissance with a new renaissance. This beautifully written collection of original fiction, ranging from children's to contemporary, both by new and established authors, will make you laugh, cry, and even shout out loud. But most of all, it will make you proud that the Griot tradition lives on and is here to stay. If you've been around the podcast for a while, you guys know I love a book that will make me react audibly. This sounds like it's sure to do that. Check out A New Renaissance, a celebration of African-American fiction, available now on Kindle and in paperback on Amazon. Learn more about this title by visiting mochagirlsread.com and also pick up a copy on Amazon. The link is in the show notes. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Participate in this discussion by joining the Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official. I hope to hear your thoughts on today's topic. You can always find me and Casey on Twitter and Instagram. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with some book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. That would really help me out and I appreciate you for doing so. The uncut video version of this podcast is available now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including after shows and more. So if you're interested in that at all, you'll need to come on over to Patreon and sign up. Without further ado, let's get started. Today we have a special episode. After a long time away, we are returning to the world of Cat and Bones. Yay! Yay! (laughs) Joining me is my fantasy series co-host, Casey from Heart Full of Ink. Welcome back, Casey. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yay, me too. I'm so excited for this because it's been a while since we've read Cat and Bones on the podcast. So Yes, but we loved it. So yay, we're back! It's a party! Okay, so... It's also a special occasion today because we are talking about two stories, not just one. You get two for one. (laughs) That's also something we rarely ever do. I think this Mm -hmm. might be the first time. I think so. Yeah. So fun times are ahead, guys. Get excited. First up is the novella A Grave Girl's Getaway, originally independently published July 1st, 2021. And the audio was published by Blackstone Audio. The novella was also a part of an anthology called Hex on the Beach. And that mm-hmm. is where you can find it if you don't want to buy it separately. And the audiobook was narrated by the fabulous Tavia Gilbert. As always, she does mm-hmm. all of these books. So the Kindle version is 100 pages. The unabridged runtime is two hours and 52 minutes. But let me just say, it took me a little over an hour to actually read it. So it's a better deal to get it on Kindle and read it yes. than have to speed up two hours and 52 minutes for like a lot more money. Yeah, <laughs> It's a better deal. So uh, this is, uh, I guess, book 7.6, I guess, is what Goodreads is saying. It's like a story in between two stories. Yes. I don't know. It's just a side blurb after the fact after everything's said and done here we are so casey will you hit us with the synopsis so we know what we're going to be talking about i will vampire cat crawfield russell is looking forward to a little downtime with her best friend denise but when witches crash the party a fun getaway turns into a paranormal showdown vampire cat crawfield is experiencing a new role as a mother turns out trying to manage a perfect domestic life for her daughter is more challenging than Kat ever imagined. Since things have finally quieted down in the undead world, her husband Bones suggests that Kat recharge by spending a girl's only getaway with her best friend Denise. Kat and Denise intend to spend the week doing nothing more than dancing, drinking, and sightseeing. Unfortunately, they stumble across a deadly summer solstice ritual performed by powerful witches who have no intention of letting their uninvited guests live to reveal what they saw. Will the girls only get away turn into 
turn out to be the last vacation ever for Kat and Denise. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, God. So I have to admit, I barely read the synopsis. I barely read it. I just said, OK, <laughs> we're going to read it. So yeah. I just jumped right I, on I didn't in. read it at all. I was like, <laughs> new cat, give it to me. I want it. Yeah. So when I started listening, I'm like, OK, sounds or reading. Excuse me. I'm so used to listening. <laughs> reading. I'm like, OK, it's great. And I'm like, wait a minute. This is horrible. <laughs> it's a horrible <laughs> vacation. It turned bad really fast. I'm like, oh no, a typical, you know, typical cat. Like, let me go yeah. find the worst case scenario <laughs> and jump right in. Of course, of course. Because anytime she's anywhere, bad stuff just happens. Yeah. And of course, you know, she's walking along the beach with Denise and she smells blood. And she's like, oh, gotta go investigate. <laughs> what do you know? There's a whole bunch of witches trying to kill a teenager. And she's like, I can't, I can't sit back and watch this happen. Yeah. I gotta go, you know, insert myself into this little ritual and stop it. Yeah. She's like, I can't let you do this. Like, why can't you just be like normal people and get like killers and <laughs> get, grab a pedophile and kill pedophiles. Them like, why don't you get those people? Why do you have to get this kid? And I'm like, yeah, point. Good point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good point. And the funny thing was, some of the witches were like, yeah, that's what we want. Yeah. We want to kill pedophiles. <laughs> and the other witches were like, no, we have to stick to the old ways and kill teenagers. Oh, my gosh. Well, one of the things I did really enjoy about this is that we got to see, well, I thought for a minute we were going to see Ian and Veritas. I really thought it was going to happen, but it did happen. <laughs> but we did get to see Veritas' brother, half-brother. Mm-hmm. Um, what's his name? A she, a she, a shale, a shale. I don't know. It's just, like it's escaping me, and I don't have my Kindle. Um, but he's like full on demon or half demon and half um celestial angel something. He's got some weird combo going. Did you read the Ian and Veritas books yet? I haven't yet. Okay. So this is all spoilers. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, like the, the short story spoiled it anyway, but. No, okay. I realize, like, I keep saying I'm going to read Ian's story or trilogy now, and I just haven't. And so now I'm I'm more inspired to go read it. Yeah, because this is definitely, like, going to spoil a little bit about that series if you haven't read it. Um, but I, mean, I thought it was cool. I didn't guess. You know, they're yeah. off on their honeymoon. <laughs> so, yeah, sure. You're like, oh, yeah, so they get together yeah. after all. Surprise, yeah. surprise. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. I know, right? But I do, I think I like, of all the little spinoff ones, I thought mm-hmm. like Ian and Veritas books best of every, all the, the other little ones. Like, better than Vlad's. Right now, Vlad is my favorite, but since I haven't read Ian, I don't think that's fair for him. So I'll, I'll read Ian and then come back and tell you who I like more. Yes, okay. Because I think I like that more because I think the heroine is the most badass of everyone without mm-hmm. telling all her business. <laughs> she is the <laughs> baddest bitch ever, so to speak. I'm like, yes, girl. So that is why I thought it was really exciting to see her brother pop up here. I'm like, oh, you mm-hmm. know, he is like really helpful, but he fits the group. Like he's helpful, mm-hmm. but in his own way. So, of course, he's got, own, his, yes. he's got his own quirks, right? <laughs> <laughs> but without him, they would have died. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, they were hexed and cursed and Kat literally could not move. Denise was only partially able to move because she's, you know, part demon. So she called this other demon friend to come save them and he had to laugh. And Kat and Denise both said, you know, don't tell our husbands. Don't tell them don't anything. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to do this on our own because it's a girl's trip. And, you know, if the men come close to us for more than, I, what was it, like five minutes, they'll be cursed too. Mm-hmm. But does he listen to them? Of course not. Obviously not. Of course not. No. So but Bones he, and Spade yeah. have to show up at the very end. I know. And I kind of wish that hadn't happened because... I wanted them to like save themselves and they kind of mm-hmm. did, but they had help. You know, I wanted them to save themselves. Yes. But I don't think it would be a true cat book if Bones didn't show up. 
he could show up after everybody was dead <laughs> and be like, what happened? Why you didn't tell me? He could have read her the riot act and I would have loved that. I just, I don't know. That's just me nitpicking, I guess. Because That's okay. nitpick away. Because honestly, Denise has done more in this book, I feel like, than, well, she's done some stuff in other books, but she's always like secondary, you know, she's always yeah, in the no, background. She's- She's very secondary. Even in her own book, she wasn't as powerful just because she didn't really know what her powers were. Mm -hmm. She's really grown into them over the past several books. Yeah, she did help out um, in some of Kat's books. But this time, she really stepped it up. She was the one saving the day. Yeah. and (laughs) I mean, this shows us that Denise is a powerhouse. She may not Mm -hmm. be able to fly. She may not be a vamp, but she is able to... Because she's a, a demon that can like transform into things. Mm-hmm. So she mm-hmm. saved cats, but like yes. literally. <laughs> and by turn, okay, we'll just say, you know, we do spoilers yeah. on this show. Cat's like about to drown, but I guess she can just hold her breath. But of course, Denise is mm-hmm. like, I'm not going to leave you in here. You wouldn't leave me in this cave underwater, mm-hmm. dying again and again. So I'm going to help you, but you're heavy <laughs> as hell. I can't do this because she's like dead weight. So what mm-hmm. does she do? She transforms into a freaking shark, a big ass <laughs> shark, and she bites her on the shoulder and drags her out the cave. I Ouch. thought that was hilarious. <laughs> so, I was laughing so hard during that scene. <laughs> oh my god! I'm like, what? and I was like, why did she turn into something like an octopus? I know the suction cups are bad, but with the tentacles, you could just carry a cat and not, you know chew her shoulder off with shark teeth well i don't know how octopuses go as far as speed but sharks are fast but did they really need the speed or i don't know maybe she felt it was urgent so i don't know possibly i don't know at that point she didn't know what was wrong with cat right yeah no she just knew cat could not move yeah couldn't do anything couldn't save herself and so denise was like well I guess I'll just change myself into a shark and save us both. And And she she does that. And she gets them all the way back to their hotel room. So she changes back, drags her ass to the hotel room. And she's like trying to help her. And then, (laughs) you know, Catman says something about like, you know, the bite and can't you do something better or something next time? And she's like, well, you know, I'm trying to be nice, but I want to brush my teeth. Right. Because (laughs) I've got your blood in like flesh in my mouth. So (laughs) I'm like, girl, you don't think of those things. But that's Mm -hmm. when you change back, if you had that in your mouth before it would be in your mouth it'd now still be in your mouth now yeah you'd have to be a really best friend a really <laughs> <Yep>. best friend <laughs> which they are <laughs> which thankfully. they are because that's disgusting i'm like oh poor denise. <laughs> poor denise i know but it ended up being like this really crazy thing where they you know she couldn't move or mm-hmm. talk like total paralysis unless of course, demon blood. Demon blood fixes demon all. Demon blood. <laughs> yes. But demon blood, and I forgot this, demon blood makes vampires extremely high. Yes. Like drunk and high, like a drunk high combo. Oh, yeah. Times a thousand. So they are crazy. <laughs> yes. So he shows up again, gives her some blood. Hey, I'll help you. Mm-hmm within this small parameter because i can't do this i can't do that i can't break rules but i can help you do this Mm -hmm. and she's hilarious as she is like (laughs) trying to drink more of his blood and sneak up on him and try to hug him and bite him and stuff (laughs) like like, lady she's you know (laughs) drunk off her ass yeah and so she wants to start fighting the floor and punching the floor because she's just like the floor is so mean to me so i'm gonna punch it (laughs) I mean, only Janine Frost can write such comedy. Yes. Like in this kind of story. Like you think it would be all, oh my gosh, suspenseful. And it is, but it's funny. It's funny. It's freaking hilarious. I think I laughed more during this short story than I did during like any other humor book that I've read recently. Mm -hmm. Like this is, this is why I love Janine Frost because this has every element, even though it's a short story. You know, there's the romance between her and Bones that does pop up a bit. 
She has all the drama about being a mother. But at the same time, you're still sitting here laughing because she's punching the floor and her best friend turns into a shark and drags her out of a cave. I know. And like there was just so much packed into the story. And I loved it. Later, she turns into a dragon and she's like killing witches left and right. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. I mean, Denise is a powerhouse. Like if she, she wants is. to. She is. Yeah. I almost wish we could get more books about Denise and Spade in the future. Now that Denise is more, you know, comfortable in her power, mm-hmm. so to speak, I'd love to see them take on some really heavy hitters together. Yeah, I think that could be fun. And especially since she's going to do what she wants to do anyway, despite what, you know, Spade says, like at mm-hmm. the end there, Kat's like, should we do this again next year? He goes, oh, <laughs> no, over my dead body or something, he says. And she's like, OK, yeah, next year I'll pick where we go. <laughs> so she's like, whatever. <laughs> We're going to go. Just We're going to go. Down. Whatever, dude. Yeah. <laughs> if there's it. more dead bodies. We'll figure it out. I know. And they do save themselves. And they have, mm-hmm. I mean, that's a horrible little weekend getaway, though. I must admit, that's not the kind of getaway I like, but. No. No. But it works for Kat and Denise. Yeah. Like, they, they never really got their own adventure during this whole series. Mm-hmm. You know, Kat saved Denise because Denise is being chewed on by a vampire back when she was hiding from bones between book one and book two. So, yeah, six books ago. And Denise has kind of been there in the background as a friend, very human. Then she got her own book and we find out she's not fully human, but still. She helped a little, but she never got her own real spotlight and the fact that the two of them got this adventure together was so much fun yeah and actually i kind of thought of denise as like oh let me just scoop in and save like let me do the the part at the end where Mm -hmm. like for example she um when they were trying to save her kid like denise was like looking like her right Mm -hmm. she went and did that whole switcheroo thing yes so i'm like she comes in and does like a little bit and then she goes back into the shadows. I'm like, no. So this was actually really good to have her step out and kind mm-hmm. of show what she's worth. And I would love to see more of her. Like if somehow we get more books in the future of this, I would love to see or even have her appear in other series with Spade in other yeah. ways, you know? Oh, yeah. No, I'd, I'd love for Denise and Spade to get their own books, more of their own books mm-hmm. or, yeah, showing up in other people's books like this and kicking ass mm-hmm. yes i loved it i did love it and i did like seeing cat as a mom although i kind of you know me and babies right me mm-hmm. and babies so like the one part where you know um denise is like oh we're gonna try to adopt da, 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 da. they have this whole conversation about her being a mom i'm like okay i guess fine but can we please have some characters that are childless and happy about it? Shit. Like, please? does everybody need to have a kid? Like, that bothers me a little bit. I'm mm-hmm. like, why? It's such a trope that I'm over. Yeah. Like you, I'm child free. I'm happy. No kids for me. No thank you. I mean, maybe I would adopt someday, but, you know when I'm in my late forties and I want to adopt teenagers, like no babies, no diapers, none of that. No, thank you. Yeah. It's just so annoying. I want to see a lot more characters like that. Please, please give me more child free characters. Yeah. And that's what Denise was. And she was great. And then she had Mm -hmm. to go mess it up with that. I'm like, what? So now she can be happy. Now she can go off and be happy because she's going to, she's decided to adopt a a child. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so of course it wasn't perfection. Nowhere near. But like I said, I did like seeing Kat as a mother. She kind of was reminiscent of her mo- her own mother, mm-hmm. like in her approach with her daughter. Yeah, her her own upbringing was really really difficult, as we see again in the other half of the grave. But seeing Kat with her daughter was it was okay. It did. You know what? It's like. I said this before. It Kat should never had a daughter. She shouldn't have. None of these people need children. 
just because of the lot, the, the, the things that they do, the trouble that finds them on a regular mm-hmm. basis. And I thought I could give it a pass because this daughter was like a unique daughter. She was used, she was weaponized, right? Like mm-hmm. she wasn't an infant around them or a toddler around them, no. but it's I think still she's seven, but looks much older. Yeah. Yeah, or nine or something. There was something about she was seven when they found her, but I think she's a yeah. little older now, like nine or something. Yeah, because it's been a few years since yeah. the end of the last book. So she's a little bit, but she looks like a teenager, right? Like she Yeah, looks, she looks older. I think there was a line about how she looked older. Anyway, mm-hmm. yeah, no, she's a child. She's, but it, yeah, you get what you're saying. Yeah. So enough with the babies, y'all. Babies are great. Babies are fun. I love babies. They're so cute. But dang, can I just just get leave some series without them? It's okay. Please. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I think do you want to rate the book? You want to rate the yeah, the novella? Let's, let's do it. All right. How about you go first? All right. I give it a five star because I loved it. I was laughing so hard. Denise turning into the shark and turning into the dragon, the girls going on this adventure together. Um, I wish it was a little bit longer. Like they dived in a little bit more into the witches and who they were and what they were doing. Like the one witch said she was Morgana and they said she'd been around for over 400 years. So are you trying to insinuate that that is the Morgana who was with King Arthur? Or Mm -hmm. is this just a woman trying to pretend like she has some, Mm. Anyway, like I would have liked a little bit more about the witches. Yeah. But overall, this was hilarious and adorable and I loved it. Yeah. So five stars. All right. So for me, I went um with four stars. I think I was actually more at three, but I decided to up it a little bit just because mm-hmm. of nostalgia sake. <laughs> I did like you know, the witch toward the end who kind of agreed to say, hey, we're going to tell you if we can't, if we come across some covens that aren't going to agree to these new terms. So I think maybe she might show up again. It seems like she may be a new character. I thought that was interesting, that possible new character, maybe. I hope so. Um, And I do like, I like the scenes with, you know, just the two of them together, Denise and um, Kat. They're fun. Mm -hmm. They're fun Mm -hmm. to read. And I like the vibe. So overall, four out of five. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we are going to talk about the other book that just came out. We're going to talk about the other half of the grave when we come back. Check out the commercials, listening to those who support the show. And also feel free to check out the book review blog, uh, blog. (laughs) the book review (laughs) journal and notebook available on Amazon. Now we'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. All right, guys, welcome back. Next up is the other half of the grave. Book one in the series told by Bones' point of view. So technically it's book 1.1, I guess you'd say. (laughs) It was published April 26, 2022 by um, NYLA and Blackstone Audio. The audio book is narrated by the sexy voice of Will M. Watts. That's a different narrator for these books. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. (laughs) The Kindle (laughs) version is 427 pages and the unabridged audio runtime is 13 hours and 13 minutes. Casey, would you please share the synopsis? I can. From the New York Times bestselling author of the Night Country series comes a thrilling new look at the iconic origin story of Cat and Bones as experienced by Bones from the other half of the grave. There are two sides to every story, and the sizzling British alpha vampire Bones has a lot to say. Ever wondered what Bones was thinking and feeling when he and half-vampire Cat Crawfield first met, or how their story might differ if he were the one telling it? 
Now relive the beginning of Cat and Bones' best-selling love story through Bones' point of view, which reveals a darker, sexier take on their early days, as well as a deeper dive into Bones' past, the vampire world, and other things that Cat didn't see when their story was told only through her eyes in Halfway to the Grave. Cat had her say. Now it's Bones' turn. All right. So, mm-hmm. first off, let me just say, I was very nervous about this because Mm -hmm. a lot of the times when you get the same story from a different point of view, it feels like the same story. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. (laughs) But luckily for us, it wasn't exactly the same story. We got to see more insight into like his psyche and what he's Mm -hmm. like side conversations that were off the page before. Yeah, we took part in this time. Yes. And I think this book actually made Bones more likable. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, I had a thought. No, I just lost it. I'm sorry. It'll come back. <laughs> It'll come back. <laughs> that just went right out my brain. Oh, God. No, this was this was a really good book. Um, Janine Frost started putting the chapters up on her blog like two or three years ago. And to be honest, I did not read those because I was nervous. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not. And I didn't want to ruin the story for myself, if that makes sense. So like you, I was a little hesitant to read this book. But actually reading it just made me so happy. And yes, it made Bones so much better in my opinion. Yes. So like seeing that, that infamous scene where they're like, they're fighting each other in the cave mm-hmm. that had a totally uh-huh. different flavor from his point of view. Oh, absolutely. Ter- was terrified. And he's like, well, I don't want to hit women. So I'm going to slap her a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to slap her a little harder, <laughs> even though I don't like this. I don't like doing like, this, but what am I supposed to do? I have to do something, you yeah, know, how to scare her. So I'm just going to yeah. slap her. I'm like, I don't like the slapping, but I understand. And I know I mean, this is a love story, so. He can't, he can't cold cock her like, like, he can't do that. So what else could he do? But I love, love, love the fact, like, even though we know it was love at first sight for him, like, we know that. He said it throughout the series. But just seeing it from his point of view, where she's chained up, and he's like, what is this feeling in my heart? Oh my God, it's love. I'm in love with this woman. <laughs> and yes. I have to slap her and scare her, but oh man, I'm in love. Oh, this is good. He like, even calls, I think it was Spade. Didn't he call mm-hmm. Spade? And oh he was God. like, dude, I, and he's like, wait, what? What's happening? Like, he is confused <laughs> for a minute. And then he's like, wait, but she doesn't like, she hates you? I don't understand. <laughs> Oh my oh. The best part of that conversation was Spade was, you know, casually driving his car. And then he also casually he's like, I just ran my car off the road. Now that I'm safely parked in this ditch, tell me about this woman you love. Yes. Tell, tell me, me everything. All the things. It was funny. It was really cute. It was like it was so cute. Yeah. Like that really scene alone, it. even though it was just a little bit of dialogue, was worth it. Like that mm-hmm. was that was so cute. And Yes, I, I love that part. Yeah, I liked, I mean, honestly, I liked everything about it. And I, ultimately, I listened to these books originally on um, audiobook. Mm-hmm. And of course, Tavia Gilbert is the queen of these mm-hmm. books. She makes Kat's voice come to life. But hearing this other guy, mm-hmm. hearing Will, what was his name? What did I say his name was? Will. What? <laughs> <laughs> Will Watt. Will M. Watt. When I first heard mm-hmm. Bones' voice, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> shit. Like, it's a different experience. Like, because, you know, when you hear a man's point, point mm-hmm. of view through a woman's voice, it's not the same. And yeah. then when you hear this bona fide masculine voice mm-hmm. with a slight accent, I'm like, wow, this is Bones. I'm like, I never want Tavia to speak for Bones again. I'd rather him and her work together mm-hmm. in concert than I just I can I can never forget this now. So thankfully there will be more because I need to listen yes. to his voice over yes. again. 
<laughs> out. And I encourage y'all, if y'all, even if you don't listen to audio, well, it might not affect you if you don't listen to audiobooks, but if you've mm-hmm. listened to all of these in Tavia's voice, to mm-hmm. hear this from Will's voice, it's startling and it jars you and you're like, oh, what's this? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> it's a completely different experience, let alone the content mm-hmm. is different. So mm-hmm. I can't say enough about the narrator. He did a really good job. I need to listen to him. I ended up downloading the book, but I, w- I thought about getting the audio book, but I downloaded it because I'm just so used to doing that. But what well, you keep talking about him, I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I need to get this audio book and listen to it. Yeah, because from Tavia's voice, he sounds, mm-hmm. uh, it's just, it sounds wrong now. You know that what I mean? Sense. Yep. So now that I've heard it this way, I don't want to hear it the other way ever again. <laughs> that makes sense. But she did a good job, though. She did a good job, but I love it this way. So, and I think that just intensified the experience for mm-hmm. me. So definitely, I would recommend audiobook, especially if you check the other ones out on audio. But I know when you read it, you've created the, the voices the in voices. your head already. Mm-hmm. So just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, in my own head, his voice does sound different because we're like, we're seeped inside his psyche. Mm-hmm. We know exactly what he's thinking when he sees Kat. We know exactly how hard all of the jealous rage is for him in a way we didn't before because Kat was so bigoted and, mm-hmm. you know, anti vampire everything. And we're seeing Bones who like instantly looks at this woman and says, this is it. I'm in love with you. And just does everything he possibly can to make her love him. And when we read that from her point of view, it was more like, okay, so here's this really hot vampire guy who's being nice. Mm -hmm. We don't really know what's going on in his head, but eventually he says, I love you. But she doesn't believe it. And it takes her basically the entire book before she believes it. Yeah. And then, you know, it's too late. But for him, it was right from the very beginning and seeing that, oh, it was adorable and I loved it. Yeah. And seeing how like his feelings about her self-hatred, basically, Mm -hmm. it's like he was really trying to help her work through that because. Oh, yeah. Because he didn't like it. And he knew if she kept hating the vampire side of herself, she would continue to hate him. And Mm -hmm. he didn't want that. No. And then after they got together, the scenes were hilarious. So, like, after (laughs) they got together, remember when she had her apartment and she had Mm -hmm. the neighbor? Timmy. Timmy. Now, yes. In the original book, Bones was very jealous of Timmy, but to see it from his point of view, view. it was so funny. Like, he was going to, like, murder Timmy. (laughs) Yes. Yes. He's like, nope. This little fucker's dead. This is it. I'm like, oh my God, this is so freaking funny to me. Like, I don't know. I just, yeah, I really liked the different change. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. I also liked that the author has updated it. And by what I mean Mm -hmm. is, hey, Bones is ordering food on Uber Eats. Yes. He's using, they're using different cell phones. He's done other, you know, they're talking about other Mm -hmm. things that are present day, right? So Mm -hmm. the whole thing got updated Mm -hmm. a little bit. In the original one that came out in what, like 2006, 2007, Kat didn't have a cell phone, which is kind of typical for back then. Mm -hmm. And Bones had a beeper. (laughs) (laughs) Which I know what a beeper is. I'm a millennial and I know a beeper. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I was really glad when it got that updated, you know, so it wasn't, you know, taking like every single detail, everything the same. Yeah. Um, Which I think made it easier to digest because Mm -hmm. it had those updates and it was like naturally in there. But I noticed it because I knew, you know, we know the story. (laughs) We've read that first book how many times? I know a lot of times. (laughs) So. Like, wow, look at this. Look at him being all 2020, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. That's fun. I love it. It was so good. Yeah. So the first half of the book was really good. and It felt very new and very different. But for me, 
I guess like about halfway through the book, it stopped feeling like Bones's story and kind of just felt like we were rehashing Kat's story, like her specific scenes, just from his point of view. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Like it, it wasn't bad, but it was more just like, okay, so these are the scenes that were in Kat's books. And this is what we're getting from his point of view. Like with Timmy, that was more impactful from Kat's point of view because she just moved there and was making a friend and he was like her first friend. But when Bones shows up, yes, it's funny, but it felt like we were only really seeing that because it was from the other book. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how to explain it other than that, where it just kind of felt like, yeah, for the last half of the book, we were just seeing these specific scenes from his point of view because they were in her point of view. Like we weren't getting a lot of new content. Um, Seeing Bones call Ted, that was new, but Mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of other new stuff. Well, I think that's because for most of that, that part in the back half, I'm just guessing, but they were always together. Seemed like for most of that, like, they were, but there was a lot of time jumps. Um, he had this like one throwaway line about, oh yeah, I've been stalking this mayor for the last nine days, but he's boring and nothing's happening. So yeah. I'm going to go do this thing. And, and we like, could have been with him while he was doing that. I don't, it would have been boring. Like, I'm not going to lie that if the mayor was boring, we would have been bored to tears. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't add new stuff just to make it new, but it just, I don't know, like in the beginning, it felt like we were learning all this new stuff about Bones. Like, especially when he was calling his best friend to be like, yo, man, I'm in love. Yeah. Like, that was new and exciting. But after that, it just kind of, it wasn't bad. This is me just kind of nitpicking it, where I'm like, I wish we got a little bit more. Like, Mm -hmm. I wish I got to see more of Bones' life. And what he was doing when Kat wasn't around. Because in her book, we got to see all of her anxiety, her fears, her worries about what he was doing, what she should do. You know, she had so much growth. And I don't know, this this seemed like he just changed the beginning and then almost got stagnant. Well, that's dangerous. Because if she's going to write book 2.1, right, Mm -hmm. she's going to do that, then she needs to be careful of not letting that happen. Like, I don't think it stood out as much to to me, but after you pointed out, yeah, I guess it wasn't as unique on the back half of the book. Yeah. And I mean, book two is a lot different. He's very angry because she left him for four years. And we oh. got a little bit, a little taste of that in the epilogue where he finally finds her. But at the, the wedding, wedding from the opposite point of view, though, yeah, like that's he's like, be good. he is there waiting on her ass. Like, OK, mm. it wasn't obviously we knew it wasn't a surprise, but the idea of him like kind of fuming and trying to like conceal his emotions mm-hmm. so that no one could she couldn't pick up that he was there. Yes. And I'm like, oh my God. She walks down the <laughs> aisle and he's looking at her. She, I got this look on her face like, fuck. And she's like, like oh, oh my shit. God. <laughs> I can't run away because I'm in the middle of this wedding. <laughs> that was awesome. Like, I like that wedding scene. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, he came for you, girl. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, he said yes. he would. <laughs> Which was wild. She hid from him pretty well for a long time. And it was fate. That brought them together. His loneliness and a friendship with a random human he met at a bar mm-hmm. brought him back to her. Yeah. That is so funny. Uh, it's like all the things. Like, I really... And I think part of it is just nostalgia, right? Nostalgia mm-hmm. for the series overall. Oh, absolutely. I hadn't read it in a long time since we... I hadn't read it since we re- read it here on the podcast. I don't know what, mm-hmm. how many years ago now? It's been a while. Two years, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. know. Time is meaningless. I know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what time it is now. Yeah, I hear you. But I think it was a a good effort. Um, It's almost like I don't want to go over point by point because we've done that. 
we've done it. Yeah, yeah, we, we've talked about the whole plot. We've talked yeah. about the character arcs in the first book. And I mean, I love this. This was amazing and adorable. And I fell for Bones a lot harder in his point of view in those first few chapters, just because, you know, he fell in love instantly Mm -hmm. and really seeing that made me fall for him a whole lot faster yeah um but yeah i just wish there had been more unique bones in the second half of the book and i'm really hoping you know book two when she writes it there will be more unique bone stuff because he'll be surprised at the wedding i'm really mad at you you need to beg for forgiveness oh shit here's the government oh shit here's tate I can't wait to see Bones meet oh, Tate because man. he will his hate them and hate, I will be validated. He hates his guts. Oh, I hate <laughs> Tate so much. I want to read that. Yeah. That will make me happy. So I think, yeah, as long as Janine Frost keeps writing from Bones' point of view, I'm going to read it because I, mm-hmm. I love it and adore it. And it's very nostalgic and it does give new insight into this world. But at the same time, I do wish you would write new stuff. Like yeah. we said earlier in this very podcast, I would love to see more of Denise and Spade. Yes. I would I would love to see more of Vlad. Vlad is my favorite yes. right now. Yes. And I now I need to read Ian's trilogy that I keep saying I'm gonna Ian, do and just haven't done it. To yet. be fair, Ian is the worst. Like in this <laughs> series, it's like F you, Ian, you always do us some ignorant. Like, you know what I mean? He's always mm-hmm. that person in oh, this yeah. series. Um, so to see him in a different light is very, very different. But yeah. for those of you that are listening that are brand new to this series and you haven't read it, I feel like you could start here. If she's going to read I, you all these books, I feel like you could. I don't know. I, I she think, keeps this I think you could, but I feel like you would get a better impact if you read it from Kat's point of view first okay so just based off what you just said and if I went back Mm -hmm. thinking about reading Kat's book and then reading this book it would feel like I'm reading the same book back to back probably yes I guess it just depends on whose point of view you want I guess but this like you you did make a good point this the stories Mm -hmm. are very similar they're they're very very similar yes they are but not enough to say this is a different Mm -hmm. book it's the same book it's the same book, but Kat's point of view, just, again, I haven't read it since we talked about it, however many years ago it was, but I have read that book several times, but I just thinking about it right now, I feel like Kat's point of view had a little more detail mm-hmm. with the plot and, you know, like, spoiler alert at the end, when she goes off and kills the governor, we know that wasn't her just running off on her own the way Bones thinks it was. We know that was her being controlled by the government before getting shipped off to mm-hmm. her new team mm-hmm. and whatnot. Um, it just... So it, it, it's different enough that you could probably read it, but I don't know if you'd want to read it back to back. I at would. the same time, I, would. I feel... I don't know. I so think if they had to Kat's choose, first. you think she they should just read Cat's book? I think so. Hmm. Like I, I love Bones, I do. Don't get me wrong, uh-huh. and I love this book. But there was a lot of nostalgia for me with this book, and just loving Bones's point of view and seeing him fall for her like that. Like you know, and honestly, I maybe my opinion is also because I have a lot of knowledge already. So mm-hmm. I would love to see or hear from someone who maybe has read this book, but not the others. Is there anyone or is it just the fans? Are the fans the only people reading this book? I don't know. I mean, she has a lot of fans and this book went straight to the USA Today bestseller list like we when it was published. Yeah. So the fans are here. The fans love Bones. We want this. Um, I don't know if anybody new is reading it. Because to me, that would say more if new people were reading it and enjoying it versus just people who already had a connection to the story mm-hmm. and the characters. Like, I would love to hear a point of view of someone who isn't already neck deep into this world already. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
But if it's only <laughs> fans reading it, I don't know. You probably could pick this up and fall in love with this story. And I just, I don't know. I, I feel like there's a lot you're missing from her point of view, especially with her changing. Because she, again, you know, Bones was trying to help her overcome her bigotry over vampires and her self-hatred and all of the shit her mother put her through. Like, there was so much of that. But the thing is, I guess my question then becomes, if you don't know what you're missing, do you miss it? You know what I'm saying? You know what they would be missing. But if someone was like, I want to try this. I feel like this I'm is sure a much there are updated out there version. Who could read it and love it and yeah. be content with it. Yeah, I just, I just love cats so much. Like I love that I series. like cat too, but I don't know. I just really thought this was refreshing. I guess maybe it's just because I haven't read a lot of mm-hmm. books from a man point of view lately. Period. So maybe that also kind of lent to me mm-hmm. like like enjoy my enjoyment of it. Yeah, makes it new, makes it different, makes it exciting. So it's a man's point of view written for a woman. So from uh, by a woman, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So I think it has like maybe a lighter touch, maybe even a more sensitive touch. I don't know. Um, Probably like he he he's pretty emotional, and it is instant, instant, instant love. (laughs) Instant love to like the thousandth (laughs) degree. Yeah. But he does a good job hiding it, though. He does. He's he not does. all, I love you, Kat. I just met you yesterday, but I love you. <laughs> He's not doing that. So it's like that no. also makes it fun because mm-hmm. like that would creep most people out. Like, why well, don't oh, do yeah. that? <laughs> oh, yeah. No. And it, it's him in his head like, oh, my God, she's so cute. I love her. But now I have to hide this and say something snarky instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, okay. I guess, I don't know. I guess there's not much else to say on it. What do you think? I mean, I love this. I love this book. I love our discussions about all of the books in the series. Um, I do kind of want new material, though. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Like, like, give I me something this, new. But I want new. Give me Denise and Spade. I know I'm on their kick right now, but give me more Denise and Spade. I'd be okay with more Cat and Bones but new Mm -hmm. material yes like how about skip five years let the let the child be like an older teenager or something Mm -hmm. and then see where cat and bones are as a couple then i wouldn't hate it i mean i'd be curious to see how that goes Mm -hmm. now supposedly According to the novella, you know, mixed breeds are allowed to be out, right? They've reinforced Mm -hmm. that. The author reinforced that in that book. Mixed breeds are out. Magic is out. Right. So you don't have to hide her anymore. Not really. But they have their own reasons for hiding her. But they don't have to, Mm -hmm. right? It's not like they will kidnap her and kill her. That's not (laughs) happening anymore. So it would be fun to see a different story. Like, in the future, in a different place, in a different setting. Mm-hmm. I would love that. I guess we have to see if Janine Frost ever gets the bug to move forward or if she's going to stay in the past. Hope so maybe, you know, as she writes from his point of view, she'll be inspired for future stories. Mm-hmm. Even, you know, when their daughter grows up and when she's a late teenager, early 20s, she can have her own adventure and her own story story like i would read that that would be new and interesting and different and then get occasional help from her aunts and uncles <laughs> you her know, parents her, her aunts and uncles right her pseudo grandparents as it will be <laughs> when needed right yeah yeah because cat was 21 22 in this book mm-hmm. she was if her daughter's 20 i would read that book mm-hmm. Totally. So yeah, if 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 anyone is listening that knows Janine Frost personally, drop that nugget in her ear. We would love <laughs> to see a future story of Cat and mm-hmm. Bones. Much mm-hmm. further in the future. Skip some years, but you probably if you want to keep writing in the whole universe as a whole, everyone would have to jump some years so you could keep mm-hmm. 
the timeline yeah. consistent with all the different variations of this world. And I mean, she could write other stuff before jumping forward with Cat and Bones. Like, I know I'm stuck on them. I'm sorry. But Denise and Spade could get an adventure before they adopt a child. <laughs> or maybe the adoption is an adventure and they have to fight witches or something. I don't know. But like, oh. give us something and then <laughs> jump forward in time. I don't want an ad- adoption book. I don't. I'll be like, I don't want it. I mean, like, it could be the happy epilogue at the very end. I want I want new stuff. Yeah. So while this was a fun trip down memory lane, we want new stuff, basically. We agree. Yes. yes. All right. Let's 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 go ahead and rate the other half of the grave. How did she do? Um, because when I first finished my instinct was to give it five stars. And I kind of still have that instinct, but also, you know, it's the second half is just slow and it just feels like a rehash. So if I could get a four and a half stars, I would do that. Like four and a half is perfect. You You're not going to let me go half, half star, will you? <laughs> 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 okay, so I think I'm going to round down to a four. Like it was a fantastic story i love seeing it from Bo's point of view it made me smile it made me laugh it made me fall in love with him faster i just wish the second half of the book had been a little different and a little less rehashy and a little more like this is what bones's life is like this is what he's doing Mm -hmm. this is him hanging out in the cave all alone like yeah i just want a little bit more of that yeah so a solid four stars yeah it's okay. great highly recommend to anybody who loves the series that's fair anybody who's a fan of janine frost absolutely 10 out of 10 read it okay it's just not perfect okay i gave it a five because my instinct when i closed the book was five i really had a mm-hmm. fun time with it i blew through it in like two mm-hmm. sittings it was so crazy i just was like just consumed it really quickly and it was just a fun ride and it was down memory lane. So five out of five. But I will say, I think that you will get more enjoyment out of it the further you are removed from the original seven books. So like, mm-hmm. let's say it's been a couple years since you've read them or five mm-hmm. years or whatever. It's been a while. This would be a really nice way to like scratch that itch and you won't be... I think maybe as nitpicky because it's been a mm-hmm. while, right? Yes. But if you're brand new to the series and you just started this series, I definitely say hold off on this. Wait a mm-hmm. long time. Don't go from one to 1.1. 1. 1. <laughs> Don't <Yeah>. do that. <laughs> I would not recommend. <laughs> yes. No, would not recommend that at all. No, but definitely fans who haven't read it, this stuff in a while, you've been out of it for a while, jump right on in. And the water's warm. It's cool. It's great. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's bones. You'll love it. Yeah. If you loved everything from Kat's point of view, even if you were like, I like it, but it's not quite right. Like if you gave it three stars or above, you will love this book. Yes. You might even like it a little more depending on the kind of yeah, angle you Kat want. Kat was a little bit of a bitch. Like she, she was, was not. He was a little whiny at the beginning. She was. She, you know, so to have a and little bit grows. less of that yeah so, yeah seeing it from his point of view seeing how he handles that and how he's trying to help her mm-hmm. and make you like it more yeah we concur <laughs> yes <laughs> all right guys i think we're done for the day what do you think casey i think so i love all of this yes the process is amazing yeah it's been like a blast from the past um it's mm-hmm. been a fun time and get excited y'all because we have other you know things coming that are blast from the past we're not gonna tell you what it is but (laughs) there's other things coming along so be sure to stay subscribed give us a like before you head on your way and we will catch you guys in the next episode until then take care of yourselves bye guys hey everybody If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. 
For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.